Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. And I'm going to warn you up front, this post is going to be a little elitist. In fact, it will be unapologetically elitist, because sometimes that's just what is needed. Which brings us to Rastar, the base design tool that was teased at CitizenCon and now appears to be on the roadmap. Now, usually when taking a developer tool and giving it to the players, the typical and not elitist tendency is to say, let's simplify this in order to keep the learning curve short and so anybody can use it. The problem is pretty much every MMO that has put base design in the hands of anybody has inevitably wound up with an arms race to draw a penis that can be seen from orbit. Except in the case of Star Citizen, it actually will be a penis you can see from orbit and all the way down from orbit too. And I don't actually blame them for drawing a penis. You see, and this is the elitist part, it takes a particular kind of knack to be able to look at a plot of land, understand what is desired for the structure, and just, well, see the solution. It's related to a type of intelligence called spatial visualization. For a person without the knack, they will look at a plot of land like a person with writer's block looks at a blank sheet of paper, and what fills in that stubborn mental void is, hey, I could draw a penis. But for a person with the knack and motivation, they will not be put off by the learning curve. They want the full features. So instead of trying to make it usable by everybody, CIG should instead look at enabling a cooperative workflow and then let the learning curve be a barrier to those who really have no talent for design. Now, rather than talk about myself, which would likely come across as bragging, I'll talk about somebody else, specifically morphologists. Now, I have no idea whether morphologists would be interested in being an architect inside the game as well as outside, but let's presume, for discussion, he does. Based on his nearly 180,000 subscribers and how heavily he features his profession in the titles of his videos, one would likely presume that having a morphologist design base would be something of a cachet particularly so if the name of the designer was part of the properties of the base and if there was a way to be confident that the base was built the way morphologists designed it. If so, I guess morphologists could get a fairly decent pile of UEC for doing it. More power to them. I would also say with a high degree of certainty that if you had morphologists design your base, you wouldn't get a giant penis drawn on the terrain. So how would this work? Well, you have three roles owner, designer, and builder. And these roles are exactly what they mean in real life. Sometimes more than one role will be performed by the same person, again, just like in real life. The owner contacts the designer, who hopefully has talent and motivation for designing good bases. They discuss what is wanted for the base, and the owner sends to the designer a token that will let them call up the proper tract of land in Rastar. The designer then creates the proposed base and the owner can view the proposal and make suggestions about how to improve it. So far, nothing has been built. It is all just happening in Rastar. Once the design is complete and satisfactory to both of them, the designer can release to the owner a database record that will instruct the pioneer, owned by the builder, how to build the base. If the owner has their own pioneer, they can use it, but more likely they will work with a player builder who has specialized in using the Pioneer. After all, the Pioneer is much too expensive a ship to buy it to only build one base ever. So you could have one player that is designer and builder and owner, or maybe one that is both designer and builder. Design build firms are not uncommon in the real world. But you don't have to coddle designers by dumbing down Raster for just anybody to be able to use. Because just anybody shouldn't. Those with both the knack and motivation for designing will put up with a steep learning curve. How do I know? Well, the first computer I used to draft building plans with was one of these. It had eight megabytes of memory, and those washing machine looking devices were disk drives that stored 300 megabytes each. The terminals looked like these and didn't even use a CRT. They were green monochrome vector display tubes that worked and looked like oscilloscopes. There were no menus, just typed in commands. To say that there was a steep learning curve was an understatement. And yet, I can point to buildings in Los Angeles that were built from plans created on just such a computer despite the learning curve. Finally, a reminder about the Grow the Channel ship giveaway and the new Raise Grew channel membership. When we reach 10,000 subscribers and 100 members, 
someone will be given the Anvil Liberator Pocket Carrier. One entry per video, just be a member or be a subscriber and comment with the secret word. And the secret word for this video is the type of intelligence associated with having a knack for 3D design. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.